Hello, my name is Dr. Art Rastinat, and today we'll be reviewing how to perform an MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy using the transperineal platform by Euronav. Before we begin, there's always a few disclaimers. This video is for educational purposes only. It allows our physicians to review material after attending one of the hands-on courses. It's not to be used to direct patient care or a substitute for actual hands-on training. This video is not to be reproduced, copied, and or distributed without my written consent. How does fusion work? Well, it's based on three components. The MR imaging, the software which combines the ultrasound and the MR images using surface rendering techniques, electromagnetic tracking, which allows for real-time ultrasound imaging within the 3D space to target and track the device. What is fusion? In its simplest terms, it's the ability to combine two data sets together, one your ultrasound is seen on the right and the MRI on the left, and we'll be able to overlay these in 3D space. We use the benefits of the MRI with its high sensitivity and specificity for detecting prostate cancer, and the ultrasound for its easy use and ability to do real-time imaging. It allows us to guide, track, and record biopsies in 3D space. How do the data sets get combined? Well, using the information from the MRI, a mesh or surface rendering is performed, and the same procedure is done on the ultrasound image. And then we're able to match these up. How are they matched up? With contours. See these small triangles overlaying the surface of the object? These small triangles are unique to each data set. And then we try to match them together in the best fit scenario. That's how the two image data sets are placed together to allow for fusion biopsies. A little bit simpler. See image one, the dotted yellow box, and image two, the blue solid box, well, these two data sets are not aligned. But after registration on the right side of the screen, you're able to see where the two data sets line up. Those dots, the blue and the black circles, those are similar to our triangles, where we're trying to line them up as best as possible to allow for co-registration between the two image data sets. As with all surgical procedures, it's always important to review the images prior to the procedure. See, here's the prostate MRI. There's an anterior left apex lesion. You want to determine its relation to the urethra. And during fusion, if you're moving around and examining the MRI and the ultrasound, you look for BPH nodules, see if they line up during the procedure. Cysts, calcifications, and as, as I mentioned before, the urethra is always a helpful landmark. So the basics, I will review how to position the patient as well as the ultrasound and the Euronav device for a one person and a two person operator setup. We'll also review how to assemble the probe, the tracker, the clip, and the needle guide as one unit. The first step in getting ready for a transperineal prostate biopsy is placing the endocavity balloon on top of the ultrasound probe. A couple things we've learned. See that yellow box? Just add that much ultrasound jelly. Too much is going to make a mess. And also place a little jelly at the tip of the probe. Then, when placing the endocavity balloon on top of the ultrasound probe, please do that in an inverted fashion. This allows the air to rise to the top on the bottom side of the probe away from your imaging crystal. This makes it easier to avoid any artifacts during the procedure. The next step is to degas the balloon. We do this in an inverted fashion as well, except for this time the crystal up because the balloon hub where the connecting tubing attaches to the endocavity balloon is on the anterior surface. And this is the way you can expel all the air. And it's very important because this can affect your imaging quality. Setting up the stepper is simple. Please connect your trackers to the shown locations. This will allow for tracking of your ultrasound Pro, you must have that audible click to make sure the trackers are in place. And also, when placing your grid, please make sure that's in a secure fashion because then you'll have perfect alignment when you do your procedure. The room layout is pretty standard. We have the ultrasound to the physician's left, the patient in the dorsal thotomy position, and the field generator going over the abdomen between the legs and facing down at a somewhat angle towards the Stepper. You can use a little bit of an angle if you have a table that has any metal in it to avoid any artifact or disruption of the EM tracking during the procedure. This is an example 
You can see me looking over the patient towards the Euronav device by text adjusting the orientation and tracking biopsy cores during the procedure. And to my left is my ultrasound machine. It's always important to remember that during the procedure, please use both devices. The ultrasound picture with no color over it, overlay allows for specific visualization during the procedure. Now, with any new technique, if you're not used to doing this, it's important to understand that you may have to open the pelvis. What does this mean? If you look in this orientation, you can see the ultrasound probe is inserted. You can see the rectal wall and the prostate in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. But what's important when you take a closer look is to look at the pubic bone. By increasing the hip flexion, you're able to move the pubic bone up and away from the prostate, allowing you to sample the anterior portion of the prostate. When starting off, if you're having difficulty locating where the pubic bone is into relationship to the prostate, you can always highlight and segment this area in Dynacad and treat this as a, a target on the Euronav to see what areas you can get to, as well as determine the best path to get your needle to targets. As I mentioned before, positioning, you have your setup complete, the grid plate locked in place, and then you place your field generator above. This can be tipped slightly towards you to allow the EM field to encompass the stepper where the grid and the tracker is placed. However, if you go straight up and down and you have interference from the table, just tilt it a little bit towards you. This could help with avoiding any EM interference during the procedure. The back table setup is pretty much standard. We have all our cups, needles, and lidocaine needles set up ahead of time to make it easy for our transition between steps during the procedure. Before you're gonna perform the biopsy, please turn on the recording. See the yellow circle in the upper left-hand corner of the screen? Press record. Why do we do this? It's really important to be able to go back and look at your technique to determine if you hit the target or not. Because sometimes there's discordant paths. It could be due to the fact that the MRI was overread. It could be due to the fact that the biopsy was done and you missed the target. Or there was no cancer at all, but it's easy to put these pieces together if you have some video evidence. Taking a look at the video, now after you hit record, you scroll through and check your MRI segmentation. Where's the targets in the relationship to different anatomical structures within the prostate? And you're able to see the 3D representation in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Also, sometimes patients find this helpful when they look at this in the office to see these areas that we want to sample in context of how big the prostate is. The next step after you've reviewed your segmentation is the field generator setup screen. This is important because you're able to check in the upper right hand corner of the screen that your device has been recognized. In the left upper screen, you see us selecting the correct depth. It's always important to select the correct depth because you must have this aligned with the ultrasound or the scale will be off during your procedure. As well as in the left middle screen at the top, you see the ultrasound probe has been selected as well as the type of grid that you're using. This is very important to keep track of because as we move for therapy, your grid size changes to 14 gauge from 18 gauge. So remember to have these things selected. Once you do select them, they, those are defaulted to the same ones every time you enter the screen. But let's just remember how to do each one of these steps. Looking at ultrasound sweep and segmentation, we've set our depth, we're in our sagittal plane, and we're able to now sweep through the prostate slowly and evenly in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, capturing that ultrasound image of the prostate. It is of note, you see a large bulge of jelly within the rectum. Notice that we're still able to visualize those areas. That's because we placed about 60 cc's of ultrasound jelly in the rectum before inserting the probe. In the left upper hand corner of the screen, we just select our anterior, posterior, right and lefts, and then we select the apex and base in the right upper corner of the screens, and then we click segment. This builds a 3D ultrasound model that will, used, will be used to align to the MRI volume. We go through this, we scroll through back and forth and make small adjustments to make sure that we have the best possible contour. You're able to see this in multiple planes. When you move something in the left upper screen, look at the right and the lower left screens. These do change as we scroll through to create the best possible 3D 
ultrasound segmentation. This is co-registration elastic warping. First, we align these static data image sets. The green is from the ultrasound, the purple is from the MRI. Notice how they don't fit exactly perfectly. This information is important to understand that if they don't exactly line up, if you push elastic warping, the purple will be stretched to the green. Sometimes I use this and the majority of the time I don't. Why don't I use this? Because if the truth is the ultrasound, in this case, because that's the last thing you image and that's what you're using. The MRI, which we think is the most sensitive and specific for looking at prostate cancer, if you distort that data, you may lose some things. So if you are going to use this, I do recommend that you perform your three-step co-registration using these three screens and then look at the region where the target is and then hit the button to see how that changes and then you can understand what has been altered during your procedure to hopefully improve your ability to target specific areas within the prostate. Once you've entered the targeting screen, the first thing you do is in the transverse plane, perform your left-right alignment. This is really important because in transperineal procedures, you're really only imaging in one plane at a time. Some ultrasound units do both. Unfortunately, the way we're using this today, we'll be only using one plane at a time. What's really interesting about Euronav is that you have the ability to now, once you've performed your basic alignment from the previous co-registration screen, you can move your stepper in and out. Notice how we have a perfect alignment here without my elastic warping being on. You can see the hypochoic area below the target. This lined up very well, but please take note that you have the rectum bulging up. That area that's located right here. Sometimes during the procedure, you'll have to change alignment, increase or decrease the pressure on the ultrasound, probe upwards towards the prostate to flatten out this area or allow for the needle to be passed. Notice how the needle beveled up. Please take into account the way the needle's beveled. You can angle that up or down during the procedure to get good alignment. Place the needle in front of the target and they're able to sample directly through the area and then mark it. Sometimes your tech when they mark it may not be exactly in the correct area. Please just remember this during the procedure. That's also why we videotape it. This data is then transferred back to the Dynacad to be reviewed by your radiologist as well as you in the office to confirm how well of a biopsy that you did during this procedure. And I think that's what's really key is always having that feedback loop to make sure that you do the best biopsy possible. In summary, MRI imaging quality is everything. If you have poor quality, it's not going to give you the best results. Also pay attention to the axial scanning angle. If the angle is too steep, think about your image plane. If they're not aligned well, the more oblique they are, there's more reformatting. So you lose that really high quality image when you're reformatting it to make it line up with the ultrasound imaging plane. Always understand the technology. That's why I spent a lot of time in the beginning of the talk today going over how fusion works. If you watched only one of my videos regarding transperineal prostate biopsies, you would understand how the technology works. The ultrasound sleep, slow and steady. This creates a 3D segmentation or image that we use to align the ultrasound to the MRI. And when you are do doing the biopsy, use internal fusions. Look at the relationship of the lesion to the urethra, the lesion to the edge of the prostate. These can be very helpful to hyper-localize a specific spot to perform the best possible biopsy. And again, record and review all cases, especially in the beginning. This really helps shorten your learning curve to give you the best possible results for your patient. I'd like to say thank you for taking the time 
for allowing me to share this information with you. Please check out our website, as well as if you have any questions or comments, please support us on Twitter and or YouTube. I look forward to seeing you come back and enjoy more of our videos on how to perform MR fusion biopsies.